I'm gonna go ahead and bolt Scarface. If you guys don't know that movie, you should watch it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Horsepower and Pizza. Today, we're working on the E46. I should have started this video like an hour ago because I already got shit torn apart. I'm going over the E46. I already did an engine oil change. Went over a couple things. I'm cleaning out the um, the idle air control valve because the car had a really bad rough idle. S54s, if you guys don't know, they don't open up the main throttle bodies until like, I think it's like 20 to 25% throttle. So literally just casually driving the car around, the throttle bodies aren't even open. It's the main idle wire control valve. You guys can see that this one's a lot bigger than the um, E36 ones because that one is actually like an idle and a low speed or low load throttle body because this thing has ITBs. And if it would just use the ITBs, the throttle would be insanely touchy, like getting going and everything. So that's how they fix that. But when that gets dirty and when that sticks, when the car transfers, so the car at like, I think it's like 25% throttle, the car will start opening up the throttle bodies. And then, but then when you close it, it goes back to the idle air control valve. And if that thing's sticking, it'll like the idle will come down and it'll bog. And then it'll just, it'll sound like the car is like about to like blow up. It's literally this thing, just your PCV oil and all that stuff making this thing stick. So you just throw a little brake clean down there, shake it around and then it's good. So as you guys can see, I got stuff taken apart. I want to get a different valve cover cover. So I don't know if I like the white. This is the legendary S54. As you guys can see, got dual Vanos. This Vanos was rebuilt, has the Bison or whatever exhaust hub and all that stuff. New Vanos oil line, those things are known to go out because there's a oil pump on the cam. That thing delivers 1800 PSI of oil pressure. This is a hard line up top, but down below it's a braided line. So they'll start to leak from there just because of the immense pressure. It's kind of dirty under the intake manifold. I'll clean it all up. There's one oil leak on this car and it's leaking from the oil pressure sensor. Luckily, I have a brand new one sitting in my toolbox. I'll go ahead and replace that. Now, this is what I mean. The car has six throttle bodies. There's one per cylinder that helps improve throttle response. It eliminates any reduction in airflow so you can have the most power, but this is the crazy thing. So this engine's bone stock. All right, so if you open up these throttles and if you can see down there, it's kind of hard to see. You can see how wide and the valves are right there. It has direct airflow. You guys can see the stock head is already knife edged and everything. And that's like insane for a stock head. When you make 330 power naturally aspirated, you got to do shit like that. Like I was saying before, the thing that I noticed on my E30, cause I had S54 throttle bodies on this thing. When you don't have an idle air control valve that does idle and low RPM engine control, these throttles, you just touch it. And there's so much air that goes into the engine. The engine revs up super fast and it's actually really hard to drive normally. The idle air control valve sits, that's the hose that connects everything. It sits right there and then it acts as almost like a seventh throttle body. So it's not a pain in the ass to drive the car. And eventually something that we're gonna do to this car, I'm gonna send my DME out to Castle Performance so I can run these bad boys. These are trumpets that I print out and I'm gonna make a kit. This is just like a test trumpet. Quality isn't there right now because I was had my 3D printer running on like maximum speed. So you guys can see the actual like 3D printed lines in it. But this is insanely strong. Like I can put all my weight on it and jump on it and nothing happens. So these will sit medium length. That's gonna be the longer length. You guys can see. So it'll sit like that and then It'll make all the cool noises and all the power. I will manufacture a shield here to protect it from engine heat. And then we'll do dust covers over the trumpets. But this is just a rough mock-up. The actual printed one is going to have a bump up here. And then a thread insert. So you guys can see right there. I'm going to have an Allen key thread that goes into there and locks in between there. So they won't fall out even though these things are really tight. Like I got to pull on it to get it off the idle wire control valve back on and the hose. And then this intake manifold has probably never been off this car. If it is, nobody's ever cleaned it out. You guys can see how nasty it is. 
in here. Those are all the trumpets, and those are the things that make all the good noises. All right, so I got this put back together. I kept this loose because um, this is the clamp that goes down to there. And I don't know exactly where that's going to sit. So I kept this loose just so I can make sure it's in the right position then tighten it when I need to. When I took it apart, there wasn't a hose clamp on this. So that was like flopping around in there. It wasn't good. This is the assembly. This hooks to the vacuum manifold. And then that's the idle work, or that's the purge valve. I'm gonna sit that in there. That goes like that. So that clips to the vacuum manifold. And this car actually has a vacuum manifold because it has ITVs and that isn't an intake manifold because it doesn't hold vacuum, it's an intake plenum. That's where the throttle bodies are right there. And then behind that, there's vacuum in each individual like little vacuum chamber in there. So there's these tiny little things that here, I can just show you guys. This right here, that's for the fuel injector. This is for the vacuum port it goes into the vacuum manifold those things go down to every cylinder and they go into right there and then what that does is collects all the vacuum out of every throttle body and it brings it to your brake booster and then there's a little tee off right here for the vacuum line that goes to the fuel pressure regulator tighten that down they don't need to be super tight they aren't really holding a lot on now this is for the purge valve this routes under there this is hard to do with one hand that's gonna click in like that and then this is the line that goes down to the gas tank and then we're gonna click that in so then that right there that's gonna clip to the bottom of the intake manifold into or well intake plenum and that goes into the bottom of the intake plenum. i'm gonna go ahead and bolt the um intake plenum on or not bolt it on slip it on and then put on the hose clamps for it I'm gonna do that off camera because it it's gonna take both hands. I need to get a tripod. I still don't have a tripod. I need to buy one so I can like do time lapses and stuff like that. I'm gonna clean inside the intake manifold and then put it back on and then bolt all the intake stuff on and then we should be good. I'm gonna start filming the video of the Austin Healy right now. The next video from me will be an Austin Healy video. Then the video after that will probably be an E30 video. I got to work on the E28. And then I'm sure enough, there's going to be other M3 videos. I'm going to get to working on Austin Healy right now. Uh...